Okay. Um, so um, just quickly for a couple minutes, I'm going to let you know what's going on at the Moore Foundation. So I'm Carly Strasser. I'm a program officer there, and I work on the Data Driven Discovery Initiative, which is um, one of the funders of the Julia language. Um, so if you don't know the Moore Foundation, we're part of um, a, a group of people that work there on um, things like patient care, science, environment, and the Bay Area. Those are the four main areas that we fund. And um, of course, Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation is Gordon Moore, who's the author of Moore's Law. And um, he's still the chairman of our board. And so um, he's still involved in the types of things that we fund that are um, like Julia. Uh, within the science program, um, there are a lot of different focuses. But the one that um, I focus on is data-driven discovery. And um, in that context, we think about the fact that everybody needs data science. We all are kind of aware of this and that there's this um, focus uh, on this classic Venn diagram of the people that are in the middle of this bubble. So the people that have domain expertise, computational skills, and math and stat skills, those are really the people that are going to change the way that we think about science moving forward. And of course, um, if you are uh, into software development, you know that academia makes it hard for researchers to engage in things like um, uh, non-traditional uh, research outputs. So um, spending your time working on open source software isn't always valued by um, the academic tracks that you might want to um, stay within uh, as a researcher. And so we think about things like helping um, uh, focus on career tracks, uh, credit and incentives for people to stay in academia and continue to work on these types of projects, uh, training for people that um, are not necessarily good at stats or computational methods but do have domain expertise to get them up to snuff. And then um, we think about the barriers that are there for interdisciplinary work and how we can try and break some of those barriers down. So our goal is really to try and catalyze shifts towards new norms within academia. So we're trying to facilitate um, data science in academia as um, a way for uh, research to progress in a much faster fashion than it has been. So we do this with a $60 million six-year um, pile of money. And um, the three categories that we fund within are uh, people, practices, and institutions. So um, the bulk of the money goes to these three universities, NYU, UC Berkeley, and um, University of Washington. And they all have data science institutes that are co-funded uh, with us and the, the Sloan Foundation. And so those three institutes are really trying to figure out um, what academic data science looks like on campus and how you actually implement um, career tracks and interdisciplinary work um, within the context of the university. We also have 14 investigators that we fund that are from a range of different disciplines and um, all work on really interesting projects. And then um, the uh, final bucket is the practices, which are, are really just about tools. And so these are um, tools and techniques that um, promote data-driven research. And so Julia falls into this category, but we also fund things like the Jupyter Notebook, um, the R Consortium, uh, NumPy, which is a recent grant, uh, the Data Carpentry Organization. And um, we've also funded NumFocus directly to think about diversity within the um, context of open source projects that they fund or that they route money for. Um, and so if you're wondering where we're at in terms of that $60 million, we launched the um, entire $60 million initiative in 2013. Um, we're right about where that yellow arrow is, which means we've pretty much funded all of the projects that we're able to fund. The last bit of that darker gray bar is the project spending out the money. So um, we've pretty much promised all of the money that we were given at the time of the beginning of the $60 million initiative. So now we're reflecting. We're, um, we're basically grantees to our board. So we have to go to our board and say, look at all the amazing things that our researchers have done. Can you give us more money so they can keep doing cool things? And so that's the phase we're in now. And um, what that looks like is that we are thinking about what we might want to present to the board in November when we ask them for more money. So we're um, convening review panels. We're having an external evaluation conducted by a firm. Uh, we're doing some landscape reviews of what's been going on in the community at large. Um, we, of course, have a lot of experience hanging out at places like this and talking to people like you guys to understand what the needs of the community are. Um, we're going to talk to the board and we're going to do a lot of interviews. And so over the course of the uh, next few months, we're hopefully going to have something that takes shape that we can um, get funded and continue to fund projects like Julia. So if you have um, you know, fantastic ideas of things that you think the community really needs, we'd love to hear from you now um, as we think about this next iteration. And then uh, if, assuming we get funding, in the next year or so, you can start keeping an eye out for calls for um, projects and, and for us to start thinking about what we might want to fund in the next round um, and, and really reaching out to the community to find out what you guys need. And so that's all I've got. Uh, if you're interested in those types of things that we fund, we do use the hashtag more data on Twitter to um, identify projects and people that we work with. And um, I'm happy to 
uh, answer emails if you if you have inquiries or um, questions here. That's it.